today we are going to review a comprehensive review of Photoshop tools, the tools that you've learned so far. This is going to be on your final exam for the first semester and we're going to start with select all and then we're going to come down here to edit copy and then edit paste. Select all is when you click on a layer and you go up to the horizontal toolbar and you click on select and you go to all you will see marching ants all around the image okay this allows you to copy and paste an image so right now I've selected this entire cute puppy picture and I've got the marching ants all around the edge if I go over here to edit copy I want you to watch what happens over here on the right side I'm going to go edit paste I basically have copied this dog and now I've got two versions of it okay so that is select all edit copy edit paste now we're gonna come down and we're gonna go to number four what happens when you go to file new well you basically bring up a dialog box and this dialog box allows you to create a brand new document. So if I come over here and I go File, New, it pulls up our new document folder. And you want to put in your name of your document. You want to select inches because you want to do everything in inches in this class. You want to put in your width. You want to put in your height in inches and a resolution of at least 150. RGB color is going to be RGB color and it's going to be a white background and if you say OK it'll create a brand new document that is usable that you can add stuff to okay so you're going to need to be able to recall all of these um, parts to the new document dialog box vertical toolbar you're going to have an additional attachment that is going to have a picture of this vertical toolbar here okay this vertical toolbar is very useful you're going to be using this all year long it's got lots of different tools this is the vertical toolbar you're going to learn about these and you'll notice that if you click on these little arrows that they expand out and that there are other options in these vertical toolbars Okay. <laughs> of course, it's not doing it right now. There we go. Brush tool, pencil tool, okay. Spot healing brush tool, eraser tool. So you have to right click on the mouse in order to open up these options. Okay. Spot healing brush tool, brush tool. You're going to learn about all these tools in here. Gradient tool, paint bucket tool, okay. Um, so you're going to want to remember the names of the ones that I have specifically told you to learn on this vertical toolbar. Number seven, horizontal toolbar. All right, we're going to explain how the horizontal toolbar changes as you click on one of the vertical toolbars tools. So if I come over here and I click on brush tool, it changes. It gives me new options. If I click on the crop tool, it changes. It gives me new options. Okay, so for the crop tool, it allows me to change the width, the height, the resolution of what I'm cropping. Okay, if I click on the paintbrush, it, it lets me choose a different type of paintbrush. It lets me choose the size of the paintbrush, the opacity of the paintbrush. So it gives me lots of different options. So you need to be able to explain that. Layer styles. How do you bring this box up and how do you use it? Well, the most common way is to just double click in the blue part of your layer on your layers dialog box. Okay? It will pull up your layer style dialog box. And when you click on the names of the layer styles, you can bring up all the various changes that you would do to a layer. Okay, so you can add special effects such as 
drop shadow, outer glow, inner glow, bevel and gloss, stroke, and so on. And you can do this to images or you can do this to text. Number nine, window history. It allows you to undo your steps. To make corrections to your project, you can go back many, many steps. So if I click over here, there's two different ways to bring up my history dialog box. Um, I can come over here to window, history. Ah, right now I turned mine off. So I'm going to go back to window, history. And if this one happens to be closed, I can, this little symbol right here, it's like a little, three little square boxes with a little arrow. That is a symbol for history dialog box. It opens and allows you to undo your steps. You can go back and undo your steps. Windows Navigator allows you to zoom in or out on an image for better view of your project by sliding on the arrow from side to side. So if we come back to this, here is our navigator. And if I click on this little sliding arrow at the bottom, it allows me to basically zoom in or zoom out as I slide it to the left or as I slide it to the right. And you can see what's happening. It's zooming in, OK? And after you zoom in, you can then move this around Okay, you can move this around to any part of the image that you really want to get a good detailed look on. Okay, and um, you can, um, that's a very handy tool. Okay, now we're going to come over here to window layers. Why do we add layers and why do we use this? Well, you pretty much can't do anything without layers. I mean, you have to add layers in order to work on your project. Okay, so if your if your box is closed, you're not going to be able to see your layers, and you're not going to be able to know what to do or what you've done, or how to go back and change things or to select new layers to work on. So you pretty much you have to have this box open. It's like the only way to work. Okay, it allows you to make adjustments. You cannot work without it. Now we're going to go on to the Layers dialog box, and we're going to look at the specific details in the Layers dialog box. So this is our Layers dialog box right here. And we've got Opacity. We've got the lock box here that puts a little white lock here. We've got Special Effects, Layer Mask, um, Create New Fill Adjustment Layer, Create a New Group, which we don't really use too much in Digital Photo 1. Uh, create new layer and delete layer. OK? These are our different options. So I want you to draw in on the lines for A. I want you to draw in the FX. OK, so FX. This is going to be in bold, and it's going to be stylized. OK? So that's the FX. Now we're going to come over here. And when you click on this FX, it adds a layer style. Okay, You can do drop shadow, inner shadow, glow, outer glow, inner glow, bevel and gloss, satin over, color overlay, gradient overlay, pattern overlay, or stroke. So it adds in a layer style. This is just one way to activate a layer style. All right, so now on line B, you're going to draw in your layer mask. So this is our layer mask right here. It's a square. It's a kind of a grayed out square with a white circle in the middle. That is our layer mask. It helps to hide or reveal areas on the layers where layer masks are added. This is not a permanent change and can be manipulated further as the project develops. So this is not a permanent change. And you can delete that layer if you're not happy with it. Or you can get rid of it, the layer mask. Number C, you're going to draw in the Create New Fill Adjustment Layer symbol. That is this one right here. It's a circle. Half of the circle is dark. And the other half of the circle is light. 
This adds a new layer above, changing all the layers below, depending upon what you do. So if you add the black and white adjustment layer, all the images below this new layer will turn black and white. This is not a permanent change, and it can be deleted and reverted back to its original state. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So if I click on the adjustment layer and I go to black and white, what happens is every layer below becomes black and white. So if I zoom out, my dog is now black and white, but if I don't like that, it's not a permanent change. So I can come over here and I can drag it down to the garbage can and I can delete it. So it's not a permanent change. D, you're going to draw the symbol for a create new layer. To create a new layer, it's like a paper. It's like a little paper with its little corner folded up. Okay. So basically, this little paper with the corner folded up is used to add in a blank layer. So I just pushed it right now, and I went ahead and I added in a blank layer. Okay. What it does is it's blank, and so it allows you to add images to that layer or stamps, or you can paint in that layer. These are just a few examples of how it's used. Okay, this layer can be deleted, so it's not a permanent change, and it will not impact the rest of the project. So if you go in on that layer and paint in on that layer, okay, it can be turned off, it can be deleted, it's not a permanent change. E, you're going to draw on a little garbage can. The purpose of this tool is to delete layers. You can, you can drag this layer, any layer, into the garbage can and it will delete that layer. So if we come over here and I drag that into the garbage can, it has now deleted that layer. Blending modes. Um, we use uh, the multiply the off, most often we've used that a lot for um, our pop art assignment. It allows you to see the layers below um, blending all the layers together, but it doesn't change the opacity of the color. It just, uh, it just exposes the under layers. So let's uh, look at that. So if I add a new layer and I paint in green here on the face and I come over here to uh, multiply, it didn't change the color of the green. All it did was reveal the layer below by using the blending mode, okay? Opacity. Now, opacity will lighten the layer, okay? So it will reveal the layers below, but it lightens it. It changes, um, depending upon what you set the opacity on, that will determine how much lighter it goes. So right now it's 100%. But if I come over here and I bring this down, it's now at like 31%, and it's very light green, 50%, so forth, okay? Image adjustments. Image adjustments will make a permanent change to a layer. So for example, if you were to go on that layer and go to image adjustments black and white, or even hue saturation or contrast, whatever changes you make, it's going to be a permanent change and it cannot be reverted back. Once you've saved your document and you've gotten rid of all your history information, you will not be able to revert it back. So if I click on this layer, for example, and I go to image, adjustments, hue, saturation, I can change the color of that, but it is going to become a permanent change, okay? The only way um, it's not a permanent change is if you use um, the create new fill adjustment layer that you can you can do hue saturation as well but it'll put it above it'll create a new layer above okay and it will um, not change or permanently change the layer below that so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and I can delete that layer but if I were to, let's say, go to the original layer, like the dog layer, and go to image, adjustments, black and white, 
and make that black and white. Well, that image is now black and white. It's permanently black and white, and I can't do anything different to it. It's permanently black and white. Layer, flatten image. This combines all your layers into one layer so that everything can be selected at once. When you go to select all, everything will be copied and pasted together, okay? So for example, right now I've got two layers here. I've got layer one and layer zero. If I go over here to layer, flatten image, it combines it all together. If I go to select all, edit copy, edit paste, it'll make a brand new layer pasting everything into that layer, okay? Foreground. You can paint any color that is selected onto a layer and it is used in combination with the layer mask to help hide or reveal areas in a layer when you paint with the brush tool. Foreground, when you change the background color, I'm sorry, background, when you change the background color, you can use the gradient tool to create a graduated color. For example, you could go from black to white if the foreground color is set to black and the background color is set to white. So let's look at that. Um, I'm going to unflatten my image and delete this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to have a foreground of black, a foreground of white. I'm going to go ahead and put in a brand new layer. Okay, so my foreground color is black. Foreground color picker, okay. My background color, color picker, background color is white, okay. Now, I'm going to show you how we can use a gradient tool, okay. So I'm going to click on my little paint bucket tool where it shares the spot with the gradient tool and I'm going to make sure this is at 100% opacity and I'm going to drag this across and now I'm going to have a gradient going from black to white. So that's how we use foreground and background together. Background is the foreground is black, the background is white and I've used the gradient tool to basically drag the color across to create this gradient color. How do you use foreground and background in conjunction with the layer mask? Well, we're going to show you that right now. I'm going to go ahead and put a layer mask on. I'm going to make sure I've selected my paintbrush tool because I have to use my paintbrush tool in conjunction with my foreground and background color. When the foreground color is set to black and the background color is set to white, the brush tool will remove the effects on the layer to reveal the layer below. It shows up on the layer mask as a black object. Select my layer mask, my brush, black and white. Going across, guess what? It shows up as a black object. When the foreground color is set to white and the background layer is set to black, the brush will put the effects, back the effects on the layer, hiding the layer below. It shows up on the layer mask as a white object. So now I'm going to reverse these. I'm going to put the white on top, the black underneath. And I'm going to go across and guess what's happening? I'm painting back in my gradient and it's showing up as white in my layer mask. The quick selection tool, how do we use this tool? So first of all, let's click on that tool on the vertical toolbar, quick selection. We change the horizontal tool, we've got the plus, add to selection, and the minus, subtract from selection. So if we, you want to draw that in, you want to draw in the wand, the little magic wand with a plus, and then on this one you're going to draw in the little mag magic wand with a minus. So with the plus it adds, to the, adds in marching ants to the object selected. With the minus it takes away the marching ants to the object selected. And refine edges the purpose of this is to make your selection perfect so that when you copy and paste it, it looks neat and naturally added. So let's come back here and let's try that. I'm going to select my dog just randomly. Kind of over-selected that, so I'm going to go deselect. All right, 
select my dog randomly. I'm going to code a refined edge. There we go. There's my selection. I can smooth this out, you know, work on making my selection look really good. Now I can come back over here and subtract from that. All right, I subtracted, and now I've got two little selections here. I'm going to work on smoothing it out and making it look good. Say, OK. So that's what the purpose of refined edge is, is to make your selection look good and natural. The quick mask. What does it do and how is it different than the quick selection? Well, it allows you to paint in a selection that can be defined further by the refined edges tool on the quick selection toolbar. It is different from the quick selection tool because you use a 50% red paint brush to paint in your selections, which gives you more control of your selection. Good, it's good for extreme detailed selections, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to push the Q. I'm make sure I'm, I'm on the paintbrush tool, okay, because I need the paintbrush tool to do this. I'm going to push the Q, and it allows me to paint in a red selection. Now, if I come over here and I click on my quick selection tool, um, push, push the Q again, I can go to refine edges, and I can look at my selection. I'm going to inverse my selection. Go to refine edges. So I've now selected my little doggy here. I'm going to feather it and contrast it. Okay. Alrighty. So I can basically push the Q. It turns it on. The Q turns it off. The Q turns it on. The Q turns it off. The quick selection tool allows me to refine it. If it's not good enough, I click back on the paintbrush tool. And I can go back in and paint some more. Q, quick selection tool, refine edge, back and forth until I like my selection. Um, you want to use this tool for really detailed selections, like if you're selecting a tree or something, then this is a good tool to use. All right, if we go on now, we can... Um, Oh yeah, I'll just remind you again that you activate the quick mask tool either by pushing the Q on the keyboard um, or you can click on this tool on the vertical toolbar. Right down here you'll notice it's, it looks almost like a layer mask tool, but it's actually called the quick mask mode. If you click on that, it makes it like a red. Uh, which turns it on. If you click on that, it turns it off. So there's two ways to turn this on. You can either click on this very, very bottom button, or you can push the Q on the Q keyboard. The healing brush tool, what, what do they do? They're, it's used to make subtle, easy corrections on an image. You do not have as much control with this tool. The spa healing brush tool will drag a little black line and then make the change. The healing brush tool requires you to hold down the alt key and left click at the same time to make the selection and then left click after that. But you are not able to control it as easily. You cannot adjust the opacity on the healing brush tool. So if we come over here and we click on our cute puppy and deselect this, and I'll come over here to our little healing brush tool. You can see I just did something funky to that eye. I don't really like that. But let's say I wanted to get rid of um, the um, this little green spot here. I could just kind of drag this across like this, and it gets rid of this little green spot. But the thing is that you just don't have as much control with this because you don't know what it's taking from. You're not controlling the exact location. And in fact, I'm starting to, to form something here that looks almost too regular. So I would undo that, OK? Um, the healing brush tool has a couple different ones you can use. You can either use uh, the spot healing brush tool, Okay, 
which is makes a little black line or you can use the healing brush tool which you have to click the alt button and left click at the same time and then release and then left click and it'll like fill stuff in but again you don't know what it's taking from it's kind of random you can't really adjust uh, the opacity on it and you don't have as much control okay so I don't recommend using this tool unless you're doing a really really simple correction okay if you're doing a really simple correction then use that tool the one that I like to use the most is the clone healing tool okay um, the clone tool you click on the clone stamping tool on the vertical toolbar you hold down the alt key and the left click at the same time you will notice a bull's eye selecting the exact spot that is being cloned then left click and you will notice a plus sign showing exactly the area being cloned you can adjust the opacity on the brush tool along the horizontal toolbar which allows you more subtle changes and you have the most control so let's do that if we come over here and click on our clone tool and uh, click on our layer uh, we're gonna change the opacity to like 50 percent so we have a much more subtle change you can change the brush size I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clone, um, let's see here, the green out of this. So you see here, wherever I bullseye is being cloned, it allows me to have a lot more control. Getting rid of this little green spot. I can even paint more stuff here if I wanted to or let's add in a new layer let's add in a little a line that I want to get rid of I want to say I want to clone out that black line okay um, go ahead and all right so I'm going to alt alt left click the blue sky above it and release and then left click and as long as these layers are merged, which they're not, I'll merge layers, it'll work. So you see that? You see how it's cloning in that blue sky above it? So if I go Alt, left click, and now I just left click, it'll clone over that Alt, left click, it'll clone in at a slower pace so that I have a lot more control okay this is going to be really useful when you go to start retouching faces and retouching your still life assignments paint bucket gradient tool how do we use this tool you use it to pour in large areas of color on a blank layer or for the gradient tool you set the foreground and background color and you drag the gradient tool across a new blank layer and it will gradually fill in the colors you selected I kind of demonstrated this already so let's go ahead and use it again so if I add in a brand new layer, and I, so the gradient and the paint bucket tool, they share the same place. I can use the paint bucket tool and just pour in black, right? That's easy. I can check, select the, um, the gradient tool and change this color, say, to green on one side and blue on the other side, and I can drag it across, and it'll go from green to blue. Oh, okay. So that's how we use the gradient tool. Move tool and sh show transform controls. The move tool, you have to do this whenever you add something to an image. So if I, let's say I duplicate this layer, and let's say I click on my move tool here, show transform, I can hold on the shift key and I can rescale this and guess what, have a duplicate picture of my little cute puppy here by clicking on these little arrows in the corner and holding down the shift key I can get this in proper proportion so that's why we want to have our move tool and show transforms because look what happens when I click off show transforms it takes the little boxes around the edge so I cannot resize this okay won't let me resize it 
keyboard commands. We have bracket keys. We have the left bracket, which makes the brush size smaller. We have the right bracket, which makes the brush size bigger. So let's try that. Let's click on our brush tool. Our left bracket will make it smaller. Our right bracket will make it bigger. Our left bracket will make it smaller. Right bracket bigger. Our zoom in and zoom out. We have control plus or control minus. So if we go control plus, we zoom in. If we go control minus, we zoom out. Our crop tool and our filter blur tools. First, we're going to talk about our crop tool. So if we click on our crop tool, we can change the width, the height, and the resolution. We can say 8, we can say 10, and we can say 150. And if we come over here and drag this across, we can crop it, and that's what happens. Well, it actually made my image bigger because the resolution on the original one was actually smaller. So let's see what happens if I make the resolution 25. It's probably going to make a tiny, tiny, tiny little image. Okay, so that is our crop tool. Our filter blur and our filter surface blur, these are tools that you are going to be using with our still life and our portrait refinishing projects. So we cl click on filter blur, Gaussian blur. I just blurred my cute little puppy and look how blurry that is. Okay, it blurs it out and it's something that we're going to use a lot. If we use filter, blur, surface blur, it will, fill, it will blur it, but it does it with more contrast. So if you've got more blacks or blacks or darker colors against white, it's going to blur it with more contrast. Okay, so that's the difference between surface blur and... Um, and um, Gaussian blur. Okay, the difference between surface blur and Gaussian blur is Gaussian blur will blur evenly, where surface blur will blur with more contrast. Dodge and burn tools. All these are terms that come from old style dark room, black and white, chemical photography. Um, you, you would use a dodge and burn tool in the in the dark room when you were making prints so we can still use them with digital images so the dodge tool looks like a little round circle that you use to like dodge an area it actually makes it lighter so look what happens when i start to dodge our little puppy here control plus get bigger it makes it lighter and if i put this at 100 percent it's really going to make it much lighter and almost not even natural looking okay so that's what it does it makes it lighter when you dodge when you burn you're gonna make it darker so if you burn this it's gonna get really 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 dark I mean unnatural dark okay so that's the difference between the dodge and the burn area and you can control the midtones the shadows and the highlights by pulling down the range here. You can go to shadows, you can go to midtones, you can go to highlights. So it just depends on what you want to burn or dodge. If you want to dodge the, if you say you want to burn the highlights, that's what it's going to look like. It eh, not too good. So it depends on what you're doing. Brushes. How do you use and load brushes? Brushes come in all shapes and sizes and can be used to add designs to a project, paint in areas on an image, or use in combination with the layer mask to hide or reveal areas on a layer. Okay. You load by clicking on the brush tool on the vertical toolbar. Then you click on the arrow button next to the brush tool along the horizontal toolbar. Then you click on the far right arrow in the corner, which will bring up a pull down menu. You click on the load brushes, and then you select the brush from the file where it's saved. You will see the brushes load at the bottom of the brush palette. So let's try that. So as we know, brushes come in all shapes and sizes, all different types of brushes. Uh, you can add all kinds of cool stuff with using brushes. Um, all right. To add a 
a new brush, you click on the brush tool arrow, you click on the right arrow, right top arrow, you come down to load brushes, you go to the P drive where you should be saving your brushes, okay? You go to photo demo examples, you click on brushes, you download some brushes, and then they show up at the very bottom. We've got some puzzle brushes that I just randomly added in. Okay, delete that, put a new layer, add in a little puzzle brush. There we go. Okay, that's how you do brushes. Edit, transform. You have various options. You have scale, you have rotate, you have skew, distort, perspective, warp, rotate. 180 or 90, you can flip horizontally or flip vertically. You, when you use scale, you, you're changing the size in proper proportion when you hold down the shift key. When you rotate, you are changing the angle or you're spinning an object. When you skew, you will slant irregularly as you click on the boxes at the corners or middle. When you distort, it manipulates the image in a way that appears to twist, bend, or an object. When you warp, it manipulates an image with a grid for finer, more detailed twisting and disfiguring. When you rotate 180 or 90, it turns sideways or upside down. When you flip horizontal, it flips in reverse ho or uh, horizontally, and when you flip vertical, it flips in reverse vertically. So let's check that out. All right, I am going to duplicate this layer. And I am going to go up to Edit, Transform, Scale. Holding down the Shift key, I can scale that second layer. All right, check it to hold it in place. I go to Edit, Transform, Rotate. I can rotate it at the corners, check it to save it in place. If I go to Edit, Transform, Skew, it will skew it left and right. Okay, so it's slanting it. It's skewing it left and right. Check it to save it. Edit, transform, distort. We'll twist it. Almost like it's turning it, twisting it. Okay. Twist it. Check it in place. Edit, transform, perspective. We'll will basically do it in proper perspective. So whatever you do on the right side, it's going to do on the left side. So it's keeping it in perspective. Check it. Edit, transform, warp puts a grid on it. So it lets me to further edit it a little more finely. Check it. Edit, transform, rotate 180. Edit. Transform, rotate it 190. Edit, transform, flip horizontally. You can see it's completely switched it over. Edit, transform, flip vertical. Turns it upside down and flips it too. So those are the edit transform tools. If we come down, we have Filter Liquify tool. You can manipulate objects by moving forward, bloating, puckering, or twirling. You can use the freeze mask. It locks the image in place. And the thaw mask allows you to manipulate um, that area. The areas that um, are not frozen are considered to be thawed, and you can manipulate those areas. You can control the brush size, the density, the pressure, and the speed at which it changes. The Reconstruct tool will undo everything you change. So if we come over here and we go to Filter, Liquify, we have our Move tool, we have our Reconstruct tool, we have our Pucker, Twirl, Bloat, our Freeze Mask, our Thaw Mask, and these are brush size, brush density, brush pressure, rate. These all are op things that you can change. Duplicate background layer or any layer. You always want to duplicate your original layer. It makes an exact copy of a layer. 
One reason for doing this is so that you do not permanently change the original image. So this is just a good habit to get into. You always want to duplicate your original layer and do all changes onto your original layer. As you watch this video, I suggest that you put your video on pause and go in and make notes because there's a lot of information here on this video.